Well, today it's my great pleasure to be with this person, and I've waited many, many years to meet him. And he is regarded in high esteem by many, many people within the hill walking community of Britain, and especially those that enjoy various data and the catalogue locking of hills. And this person is Clem Clements. Hello there, Clem. How are you? Well, as I said, Clem, it's an absolute privilege for me to be with you today. Well, we thought what may be quite a good idea is just for me, while sitting next to Clem, to go through a bit of detail concerning what Clem has done during his life. And Clem's given me permission to, uh, to show this. This is a book with all his memoirs in, all his memories of his cycling days and his hill walking. Now, we've done one or two excerpts from that, which we may splice together in one of the future films. But for now, we'll just put that one to one side. And I thought what may be quite nice, just for a few minutes, whilst here with Clem, is to just go through a, a few details of what Clem has done. Because some of the viewers watching this, no doubt, will know about Clem and his various exploits around the hills and what he's done for the, uh, the people that enjoy the cataloguing of hill data, whilst other viewers won't know. So I thought I'd give a few personal details to begin with. And I, I've written all of this out beforehand, just personal research. Clem was born the 15th of March, 1923. Now, shall I give the viewers your full name, Clem? <laughs> E.D. Clements, so it's Edwin Darnley Clements. Now you started off life, I believe, in Farnborough in Kent. Yeah. Now the first book Clem ever read cover to cover was when he was aged 14, and that was Frank Smythe's Kanganjunga Adventure. Now Clem's family used to holiday in Abu Dhabi on the west coast of Wales. And they moved there in 1940 to avoid the Battle of Britain and the Second World War. The first mountain Clem ever climbed was Tarrenhendra, and that was after finding an old one inch map to the area of Abu Dhabi on the beach. And they were very rare in wartime. So I think in Clem's mem memoirs he describes that as like finding gold dust. Now, his mother spent about 15 months at the rectory at Penmashno, and that was in about 1943. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was before then. I can't, I can't remember. Uh, Clem's pointed out, he's very good, because I, I do get what I think are facts. I do get quite a few of those wrong, and Clem's pulled me up once or twice already this afternoon. So good on Clem for doing that. Um, he was saying that he thinks it was more than 15 months that his mother spent at the rectory. But I believe that um, you used to visit whilst you were in university for holidays mm. to Pembachno. Yeah. Now, Clem, as far as employment was concerned, one of the jobs he had was working at GWR based at Paddington, and that was in approximately April 1948. And he went on to work at the Greenwich Observatory, starting in 1956. This was his fourth job, and it was also his final job. Now, he spent the first few days of your honeymoon at uh, Candesteg in 1960. Yeah. And I believe in, would that be in the Alps? Yeah. Yeah. Now, retired on the 31st of October, 1982. And it was then that he moved to Pewley Way, and that is in Guildford, and that's where we are today, in Clem's study. Now, he first started mountain listing in the late 1980s. And this was influ influenced firstly by Eric Yeaman's book, to The Handbook to the Scottish Hills, and I believe afterwards by Alan Dawson's Relative Hills of Britain book. Yeah, yeah. And one interesting fact, which I'm sure many viewers will know, but again, some viewers may not. You've never, ever driven in the whole of your life, have you? <laughs> but you've cycled quite a few miles. <laughs> many, many miles. 
Well, that's... Two hundred and thirty thousand. Oh, Oh, there about. Well, there's a few personal details concerning Clems. Now, what I'm going to go on to next is um, what I describe as Clems Hill Bagging Korea. So, um, you, you've checked these facts, haven't you? Hmm. I haven't checked them around here. Ah, well, Clem is saying he hasn't sort of checked them all, but what I'll do, Clem, if I sort of read them out, and then perhaps you can give me a, a good nudge if I get any of them wrong. Is that all right? Yeah? So... Well, well, we'll come to that one. Clem's just pointing out he thinks one of them may be slightly incorrect. So when I come to that one, I'll, I'll mention that that's the one that Clem's just pointed out. Clem is recorded as the second known person to complete all the English and Welsh 2,000 foot mountains. Now, this was from his own personal private list. And that was uh, accomplished on the 30th of May, 1953. Now... Interestingly, Clem, I do believe that the last hill, because that 1953 completion, I believe, was everything over 2,000 foot. Mm -hmm. Now, Clem didn't visit Talavan until 1964. So, whatever happens, we must not put this video in the domain of Alan Castle in the Hillwalkers Register. So, Alan, if you're viewing, turn around now. Now... Clem also completed the Monroes on the 24th of May 1969. I should imagine, Clem, is that a lifetime's achievement when you completed that? Yeah. Very proud moment. Now, the part that I've written down here that Clem pointed out he think may be incorrect is that I've got a reference that Clem also completed all the hills in George Bridges' list of the 2,000 foot mountains of England and Wales, and that again was on the 30th of May, 1983. Now, other facts about uh, Clem and hill bagging. He's visited 93 hills that have 600 meter prominence. His marrow in total is around 455, and that is as from 1972. Now his local hill, which is called St Martha's, of which Clem's cat is named after. It's 175 metres high. It's situated on the Pilgrim's Way, and this goes from Winchester to Canterbury. And as of the 18th of the 7th, 08, Clem had visited this hill a staggering 3,720 times. So that's a little bit about Clem's hill, hill bagging. But one of the very interesting subjects about Clem are those little personal details that not many people know about. And I'll just relate one or two or three or four. One is that he won many an award for his Meccano inventions, of which he has some delightful photographs. He also used to do a yearly count on Purely Down of pyramidal orchids. He enjoys making the year's supply of strawberry jam each spring. <laughs> Given that up long ago. Given that up long ago. But you used to do it though, didn't you? Oh, for a few years. For a few years. I can't remember how. But Clem's other big joy, when you uh, take away hills and hill listing, is badges. And he has reference cards within his card index of over 6,000 Badger sets. And you pointed out before, is it upwards of 7,000 now? No. no. no that's correct. No, no, no. 6,000. The index. Don't more like. Aha. I've got that wrong. I told you Clever pointed out if I got a fact incorrect. On his reference cards, he's got 24,000 Badger sets catalogued, and he's visited a quarter of these, and that is around 6,000. 
So there's just a few little personal details about Clem. But if we quickly go on to what Clem has done as far as the cataloguing of hills. Now he's catalogued many, many hills within continental Europe. A lot of that has been in association with Mark Trengove. Well, what I've just got here is considering what he's done for British hills. Now, there are very few people that have listed as many mountains and hills as Clem has. Two of the people that spring to mind, one is Alan Dawson and the other is Mark Jackson. But Clem has catalogued a phenomenal amount of hills within the British Isles. Now, for Wales, I think Clem's just pointing out what I've written down here. I haven't actually got the drop valleys for some of the hills. But if I go through them, Clem. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Now, as mentioned before, one of the influences for Clem concerning hill listing was Eric Eumann's book. Now, Clem then catalogued all the Yeemans in England and Wales. Now, I've got a total 1,310 of these hills. That may be slightly out of date. I know Rob Woodall's done a tremendous amount of work on, on those uh, Yeeman hills. Well, many people know this list as the Clem Yeemans. Now, as far as Wales is concerned, he's listed all the 300 metre hills all the way up to 600 metres, and that is down to about a 28 metre drop. He's also catalogued the 200 to 299 metre hills and also the 100 to 199 metre hills. Now the drop concerning those last two categories may be slightly different from what Clem normally does, which is 30 metres, but obviously because of the margin of error associated with OS spot heights, he brings the drop value usually down to 28 metres. Yeah. Now, for England, it's very similar. We've mentioned the Clem Yeemans for England and Wales. For England, he's also catalogued the 300 metre hills all the way up to 600 metres, and again down to 28 metre drop. For the 200 metre to 299 metre hills, is that down to 50 metre drop for those? Mm, I was, I so Clem's pointing out here that what I've written out, again, he's, he's picked me up on this. He's also catalogued the 100 metre to 199 metre hills, and Clem's pointing out that all of that is down to this 30 metre or with a margin of error, coming down to 28 metre drop. Now, for Scotland, I know you've... I think that's it. You've catalogued a phenomenal amount in Scotland, Clem. The same, I think. Yeah. Well, you did all the Graham Tops, and this was in association with Alan Dawson, I think, for the Tacit Press publication. These are the uh, 610 metre to 761 metre hills with 30 metre drop, and there are 999 metre um, hills of those, I believe. 999, sorry, hills. You've also listed the um, 300 metre hills all the way up to 600 metres. And this is down again to 28 metre drop, a phenomenal amount there. Now, just within that category, which are the 500 metre hills, I believe you've, you've classified those down to either 27 or 28 metre drop. And just to show you the totals of hills that we're talking about, just within those 500 metre Scottish hills, there are 1,212 of them. Now, you've also brought that category down, because it's almost like a subset, down to 490 metres. Now, for Ireland, this is where my research is a little bit better. There's quite a bit of detail coming up here. Again, you just there's so much that you've done, Clem. The Tacit uh, Press publication, which is here, which is Clem's just uh, very kindly um, signed for me this afternoon. And Dal is just zooming in on that. So if I go back to um, just detailing the amount of hills that Clem has catalogued. The Irish Marilyns, 433, sorry, 453 hills. The Sub Marilyns, 43 hills. The Irish Clem Yeemans, and that is between 95 metre and 149 metre drop because 
He excluded the Marilyns from those because they double up. I haven't even got the totals of those, but that would probably run into a couple of thousand. The Irish Hewitts, 211 hills, that's 30 metre drop. Sub Hewitts, 15 hills, and those are the, I believe, the 600 to 609 metre hills with 30 metre drop. Another category of Sub Hewitts, 22 hills, and they're the ones with the 20 to 29 metre drop. And then we go on to the 500 metre to 599 metre hills, and that's with 30 metre drop because of the margin of uncertainty associated with Ordnance Service Spot Heights. Clem again brings it down to 28 metres of drop, and that is 208 hills. The 400 to 499 metre hills, there's 360 of those that Clem's catalogued. The 300 metre to 399 metre hills, a phenomenal 603 me three hills that Clem Clem's catalogued. Then lastly, there's 119 hills that Clem Clem's catalogued within the 200 metre to 299 metre range. Now, that's quite good. I made a few mistakes just reading them out. And just an absolute incredible, incredible amount of detail that Clem has done for all people and I'm one of them that absolutely love looking at hill data and hill lists. So I think Clem, on behalf of many people, and uh, it's a big thank you, I think, because uh, you've done so, so much for so many people. So uh, thank you very much.